day out there. This is uh, about quarter to nine in the morning uh, in Northern California on Saturday, June 13th, 2015. And uh, there's a bunch of stuff I wanted to talk about today. In particular, uh, would be this Bilderberg 2015 meeting in Austria, uh, near Telfs, Austria, and uh, the fact that, uh, you know, this uh, Alex Jones has sent uh, a couple of his reporters, Rob Dew, and uh, well, who's the other guy? Can't remember his name right now, but um, Josh, Josh Phillips, I think. But um, anyhow, these guys are over there, and they're trying to get some, uh, you know, get the inside scoop on what's going on at these elitist meetings. And a lot of people probably wonder why this is important to, you know, try to get in there and figure out what's going on with these top. These are the Illuminati, the New World Order, the Globalists, the Blue Bloods, the Royalty. Uh, th these are all those guys, these tyrants wrapped up in one, war criminals like Henry Kissinger. And, uh, you know, Rob Dew was talking to one of the cops that was kind of harassing him a little bit. You know, this guy that came up to him and, and approached him and was giving him a hard time, kind of intimidating him. You know, he was unarmed, but there was four other cops standing nearby that that were packing heat and of course Rob is only packing his uh, camera equipment and uh, so you know he has all the right in the world to be up there reporting uh, and uh, you know this cop was giving him a hard time and you know Rob said listen you know you got a war criminal in there this Henry Kissinger if you go in there and, and arrest this guy you'll be a hero and he's absolutely right, you know. And this is the kind of thing we have to start discovering, each one of us individually. If you're in law enforcement, if you're in the military, you wield much more power than you may be aware of. Because the average citizen also has the powers of arrest that you do, that we all have to remember. And in you know, law enforcement, you need to be reminded of that fact that we as citizens can if we want to be bold enough, go into these places and arrest these war criminals like Henry Kissinger. And this is who the world leaders, including our leaders, are getting advice from. Notice the synchronicity between this G7 meeting, which was, <clears throat> what I understand, 20 miles away from this Bilderberg meeting in Austria on top of this hill. It's like something out of a movie, you know. And, uh, but anyhow, these uh, Bilderberg characters are bad news. They really are bad news. These are the money printing class are in there. These political class, all these sellouts, this fascist class, this, you know, under the guise of, you know, socialism, they feed the public this idea that, you know, they're the good guys. And if you just listen to us and have world government, it's going to get better. But look what they've done in America in terms of our standard of living. They've been nothing to destroy it. Nothing but destroy it. Okay, the, actually the, the, the truth is that capitalism is a very radical notion and this is something these kind of people don't want you to figure out. They don't want you to figure out that what capitalism does is that it eventually sets the captives free. And the way it does that is through universal full prosperity. And the way that occurs is through laws and principles and theories like supply and demand. You understand that as humanity over the ages has conceived and developed and manifested easier and easier methods of supplying the things we need, the very important essential human needs like housing and food and drinking water, okay, but also the things we crave and want, things for recreation, toys, knickknacks, gadgets, gizmos, niceties, luxuries, you name it, all that kind of stuff. Okay, from sailboats to wristwatches, okay, we want all that stuff. Because we're humans, we're inventive, we're creative, it's very natural. So if you understand anything about economics, and you understand true capitalist principles, then you understand supply and demand, you understand free market, you understand competition, you understand capital, you understand risk. 
you understand concepts like deflation and inflation. Now I want to stop for a moment and go back to a I got a reply from a comment I had left. Now Alex Jones recently had a guest, an economist on that I believe made a faux pas in stating that it was a bad thing that our currency was being inflated. And you know, I pointed out that wait a minute, that would be a really terrific thing if our currency would be in inflated because that's the same as saying your cost of living was deflating. It was going down. It was in decline, which meant your currency, instead of being debased, was being increased in worth. It was inflating. That's what the whole idea is. So we've got to not be confused about these terms. You've got to use it in relation to what you're talking about. If you're talking about currency inflation, that's a good thing. If you're talking about cost of living inflation, that's a bad thing. Because these things are one and the same. They go hand in hand. That's what we've got to fundamentally understand. If your cost of living goes down, your currency is worth more. It's just a mathematical fact. There's no way that anybody can deny that. It's unequivocal. It's incontrovertible. It's irrefutable. It's inarguable. I could go on all day. But listen, the point is is that you've got to understand certain economic principles. And if you do, you're out of confusion. You are empowered. You can have all the confidence of the greatest economist in history when you talk about these subjects with people. But anyhow, back to the comments. So I had just politely mentioned that I thought this man had made a serious faux pas in saying that it was a bad thing, currency was inflating. Whether or not he misspoke, I don't know. I misspeak all the time, especially when it comes to mathematical things or certain words I use inappropriately when my mind is going faster than my mouth is basically what's happening. This happens to a lot of people because we're all genius in our own special way. I firmly believe that. We are all equal and we all are all in the very individual and we're all super intelligent. We're made in God's image and likeness. So actually, we have unlimited potential to be intelligent, thinking, imaginative human beings. These are good qualities that God gave us because God is generous and he has no shortage of these things. He loves us. It's very important that we know these things so that we can stand against the forces of evil. Now that brings me to a passage in scripture about, you know, uh, have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. Now whether this economist that spoke misspoke, or whether he had a different concept in his mind of inflation and deflation for some reason, and this can happen. I've believed lyrics and songs were one thing, and then 20, 30 years later when I finally look at the lyrics, they go, oh my God, all this time I thought they were saying this in the song, and they were saying something completely different. So this happens. I don't know what the case was, but I believe the man misspoke. And then I got this scorching comment, this reply from this uh, person on YouTube, telling me that, uh, you know, I was a moron and I should just, you know, basically just scathing rebuke of my intelligence. So in haste, my pride and ego got involved and I left him a scathing uh, reply in reply to his... Uh, to his uh, scathing comment. And so, you know, while it felt good at the moment, because, you know, I pointed out that I knew what I was talking about, that I've actually read Adam Smith's book, The Wealth of Nations, and I read it really trying to understand what he was talking about and get a feeling for how it relates today, because remember, this is a book he wrote over 200 years ago, but it's very apt today. It's the same stuff that all these principles have been in effect for thousands of years. These money masters have been ruling our lives for a long, long time, we're born into debt to these people. And it's a radical notion for me to tell anybody that they shouldn't ought to have been born in debt to these money masters. That perhaps you should at least be equal to every other creature and be born free. Uh, it's in the light of the fact that none of us are born farm animals or zoo animals. So anyhow, while I left this scathing comment, I expected to get one even nastier back and then I wasn't going to reply anymore. I was going to be done. But instead, this fellow ignored me, which was probably the best thing he could have done. But, you know, then I felt convicted in spirit, and I felt like I did not do the Christian thing. I did not do what Jesus would have done, probably. And uh, while it might have felt good to my pride and ego, but it didn't feel good to my conscience. It didn't feel good 
to me, to my essence, to being true to the person I really want to be. And I could have said something politely back, and I could have said, well, you know, it's all about the translation, I suppose, and, you know, maybe we don't have a meeting of the minds here, but I could have, I could have approached it a lot differently than I did. So what can I do? All I can do is apologize and try to grow from it and be a better person. That's all I can do. Uh, you know, but I've got to accept the humiliation from, you know, like Jesus said, it's not what goes in our mouths that defiles us, it's what comes out. And of course, the written word is coming out of our mouth, it's coming out of our heart, the most important place, because that's where the words of our mouth come out of. But anyhow, you know, these reporters over there in, at Bilderberg, this is very important what they're doing. And it's very few people that really understand that most people don't even, never even heard of the Bilderberg group. Because they, they're clandestine, they're a cult, they act in secrecy. They don't want you to, they want to know everything about us, they want security cameras everywhere, they want to know every little thing that's going on, they want to steer the terrorist groups like ISIS and control them to do their dirty work. Well, they sit in their ivory towers, they want us, everybody confused, they want ISIS confused about this fact that really who's funding you is what many of you will term the great Satan, which isn't the American people, which isn't Christians, I mean, you know, if you're ISIS out there, learn a little about history. Okay, if you're concerned, you're, you're angry about the Crusades, this ancient vendetta you might have against, it wasn't Christians. Now, the Roman Catholic Church has jumped under this, this banner of Christianity, but to this day, they don't even tell their followers to read the Bible, to my knowledge, okay? They've got their own special version of the, their Bible. They're called the Catechism. Okay, these people were killing Christians, okay, that's the real history, uh, in, in, if they had a Bible, if they had a Bible, okay, ISIS, so if you want to get really radical, read your Bible, read that you can go to God yourself, you have a personal equal relationship with your Creator, you can learn these things, go online, study what I'm telling you, don't hate Christians, don't even hate the Catholics, let bygones be bygones, this thing could go on forever if you let it, just understand who's steering you, it's, these are some, they're meaner than you. They're cutting off heads. They're using you to cut heads off innocent people, okay? That's what they're doing. That's what they're doing. And our military guys are figuring, we've got a lot of white hats in there. These guys aren't stupid. You think these fighter pilots 